Good morning, everyone. My name is Verna Barrientos, and I have the pleasure of being your worship associate for today. Welcome if you're curious about our faith. Welcome if you're here for the first time, if you've been here before, or if you're a longtime member. Welcome whether you believe in God or a higher source, hold to humanist or secular teachings, if you come from another religion, or if you've always been Unitarian Universalist. Welcome, welcome to all. People of all skin tones, the LGBTQ plus community, kids and mature folks, those with life challenges and those temporarily without such challenges. Here we are working to overcome our society's systemic biases and you specifically are most welcome. The touchstone theme for December is kindness. Today, Kai Marks explores the power of choosing kindness in her sermon entitled, In a World Where You Could Be Anything, Be Kind. Join us as we travel into the heart of kindness, where we learn how even the smallest act of kindness has the power to transform our lives and the lives of others. After the service today, I hope you will stay on Zoom to join our usual random smallish breakout groups. These give us a chance to discuss thoughts from today's service. To that end, we'll post some prompts in the chat, or we can just say hi to each other and shoot the breeze. The UUCC Planning Committee is currently doing a survey to help guide our plans for next year. The link to this survey is in our newsletter and in the announcements at the end of today's order of service. We also want to thank UU San Mateo for administrative and professional support and in particular to the Reverend Ben Myers, a consistent source of valuable guidance for us. For financial donations to UUCC, we have options for both online and by check. For detailed instructions, see today's order of service or in the email announcing this service. Join us on December 20th for our popular and heartfelt all music service to celebrate the 2020 holiday season. Shauna Pickett Gordon has a wonderful service plan for us, featuring music, carols, and holiday inspired readings. It has become a UUCC tradition to share 100% of our holiday collection with a local nonprofit. We're proud to announce that this year we will be raising funds to support the vital work of the Coastside Adult Day Health Center. If you are not able to join us on the 20th, please consider making a donation online or send them a check directly. Please be sure to mention that you are with UUCC. And now Linda Grace will guide us in our opening hymn. Please rise in body and or spirit as you are able and join us in singing this hymn that our speaker Kai Marks chose for us. Come thou fount of every blessing. Lift up moon and desolation. 
vision, show the promise of this day. Help us find ourselves in union, help our destiny of our love. With thy need, O fount of justice, earth be fair as heaven above. Good morning. I'm Kai Marks. I'm your lay worship leader for this service. As we get, begin today to explore kindness, I share words from Pr Princess Diana. And carry out a random act of kindness with no expectation of reward, safe in the knowledge that one day someone might do the same for you. Diana was known for her kindness to people, and I invite you to begin to think of kindness as more than something soft, as more than a social grace we are taught as children. Kindness in practice is important because it carries the potential to empower the soul of a person. I'm delighted to be here with you today. I've spent many years working in the field of education where we're all about changing human lives for the better. And I've also worked for many years in the field of spiritual direction where I'm privileged to accompany people on their spiritual journeys. More often than not, in the stories that people tell about their lives, they speak of acts of kindness that help them to know it was time to make a change in one way or another. It's my pleasure to be here with you today as we explore kindness as a catalyst for change and transformation. And now I'm pleased to ask Dave to lead us in the lighting of the chalice. Please watch with kindness and patience, light the chalice. Now, please join in reading the chalice lighting words from Elizabeth M. Strong, entitled, The Light for Everyone Who Comes Into the World. Reverently, I offer the symbol of our hope and high intent. Reverently, I bequeath this flame to you. This is the light that is lit for everyone comes into the world. Bear this light to others one by one. Let the flame go from life to life till it all is lit with its warmth. Tell that the light means wisdom. Tell that the light means kindness. Tell that the light means understanding. Tell that the light means tolerance. Tell that the light means sacrifice. Tell that the light is a vision of a fairer world. Tell that this is the light that is lit for everyone who comes into the world. Now, Verna, lead us in sharing our joys and concerns. One of the ways we create community is by sharing our own joys and concerns with one another and finding support within our community. So now we invite you to click the chat button at the bottom middle of your Zoom window. That will bring up a window in which you can type in your joys and concerns if you have not already emailed them to us. As you do so, Tom will play the Pastoral Symphony from Handel's Messiah using the string orchestra sounds of UUCC's Yamaha keyboard.
May we hold with love and care the joys and concerns that have been shared publicly today, as well as those that remain unspoken in the recesses of our heart. In these times of reflection and renewal, let us remember that it remains important to reach out to one another when we feel the need and to accept being reached out to. May we find comfort in knowing that we can share our joys and our concerns here among us. Tom now guides us in a moment of reflection. Thanks, uh, Verna, thanks very much. I would like to read a poem by Naomi Shihab Nye. It's called Kindness. Naomi grew up in Texas in a Palestinian American family. And in the poem, she describes a bus ride, which might be um, through the desolate landscape of Southern Texas, or maybe Northern Mexico, where immigrants take long journeys and where regions of kindness, maybe that means towns in this case, are few and far between. Later in the poem, she talks about the thread and the cloth of all sorrows. And I can't help but think of the AIDS quilt, so huge that you can't escape the enormity of the tragedy it represents. Anyway, here is Naomi Shihab, po uh, Shihab Nye's poem, Kindness. Before you know what kindness really is, you must lose things. Feel the future dissolve in a moment, like salt in a weakened broth. What you held in your hand, what you counted and carefully saved, all this must go so you know how desolate the landscape can be between the regions of kindness. How you ride and ride, thinking the bus will never stop. The passengers eating maize and chicken will stare out the window forever. Before you learn the tender gravity of kindness, you must travel where the Indian in a white poncho lies dead by the side of the road. You must see how this could be you. How he too was someone who journeyed through the night with plans and the simple breath that kept him alive. Before you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. You must wake up with sorrow. You must speak to it till your voice catches the thread of all sorrows and you see the size of the cloth. Then it is only kindness that makes sense anymore. Only kindness that ties your shoes and sends you out into the day to mail letters and purchase bread. Only kindness that raises its head from the crowd of the world to say, it is I you have been looking for. And then goes with you everywhere, like a shadow or a friend. So now, let us take a moment of silence.
now. Let's extend blessings to each and all as we sing a new version of the Mita chant, arranged by Shauna Pickett Gordon and sung by Shauna, by Linda Grace Frost, and myself. Please join us. Pleasure, I get to introduce our worship leader today. Kai Marks is a writer, teacher, and spiritual director who is also a member of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Redwood City. Kai is a graduate of the Caroline Miss Education Institute programs, both in archetypes and in mysticism. And she's also a graduate of the Disney Institute program for excellence in leadership. She holds an MFA in creative writing from the University of San Francisco, and she currently serves as the head of school for Fusion Academy Palo Alto. She dearly loves the UUCC community and is deeply honored to be a part of this worship service. Good morning. It is such a pleasure to be here and to be with you. I love this UUCC community. And as you can see, there is such attention to detail in every aspect of the service, which is thanks to so many people. The beautiful music that you've heard, the photographs in the slides and all the careful preparation. I am so grateful. And it's been so much fun to work with everybody in putting this service together. It really is rather astonishing when you think about it to realize that we have the power of choice. We really can choose to be anything. So why not choose to be kind? I think it's a challenging thing to look at that power of choice and how many choices we make in a day, how many choices we're not even aware of, or the fact that there is no end to the effects of the choices that we make, no matter how small. All choices become part of eternity. If we really thought about that, right down to the choice we made of what we have for breakfast, I suspect very few of us would get out of bed because that's somewhat overwhelming. And that idea of the power of choice is perhaps a topic best left for another service. But today we look at this idea that kindness is a choice. And we're very lucky to be born into a world where we have choices. Because we don't live in monasteries where we have the time to contemplate every choice, some choices sometimes go on autopilot out of survival. But today I hope you'll consider what it means to choose to be kind. It sounds simple, doesn't it? Well, if it were easy, everyone would do it, right? Some years ago, I gave a sermon on the topic of honesty. I asked the congregation gathered in the sanctuary that morning to raise their hands if they considered themselves to be honest people. Every hand went up. Then I asked the same people to raise their hands if they felt that we live in an honest world. No hands went up. So there's an interesting contradiction. I suspect that asking about kindness might produce similar results. While most people view themselves as kind people, far fewer might agree that we live in a world where kindness prevails. So why is that? 
In my quest to answer the question of why, I found that there are entire organizations formed to encourage kindness. Some of you may have heard of the kindness campaign, which was created to teach children how to be kind to themselves, because what they found is when they educated children to do that and to make a practice of it, it reduced bullying. There's also a World Kindness Day. There are kindness journals to help us notice and track our kindnesses to ourselves and to others. In fact, the title for this service comes from a t-shirt I have with the same words printed on it. I also have a t-shirt that says, choose kindness. And I have another t-shirt that has be kind first emblazoned on it. So I guess I like to use my shirts to tell other people what to do as one of those who considers myself kind, but who does not feel we live in a world where kindness often prevails. So why is it that we seem to need t-shirts and organizations to support us? I suspect that this is because kindness is a choice. And if we're being rigorously honest with ourselves, it's a choice that does not always come naturally. And because it may not always come naturally, we have to practice that choice over and over again. After all, if our hearts were automatically in a holy place, we wouldn't need to come to church and sing songs about it. In the Judeo-Christian tradition, the Christmas season is one in which we're reminded to practice kindness. And I suspect this may be easier to do when we have a focused season in which to do it. I'm not sure it would be easy to hold this kind of spiritual high altitude all 12 months of the year, but many of us are willing to give it a concentrated effort for at least one of those months. And one of the aspects of the tradition I love most is that the nativity story at its heart is a story of kindness. It's a story that reveals a God who is kind to us, a God who keeps his promises. We're given the gift of light in darkness and the gift of hope and redemption. And the miracle in the manger happens because of the kindness of strangers on a cold winter's night. Now here, you could look at this a little differently. There may be some who say, what is kind about that? Someone asked the woman pregnant with the Messiah to go have her baby in a manger. I suppose that's true from one point of view, but if you know your story, you know that it was essential for the child to be born there. Not only because if he'd been born in an expected place, he might have been killed, but also because he was a king who was meant to have humble beginnings so that the people who would come after would relate to the story that he represented. It would not have been the same story had it occurred in a palace. Sometimes people hold back their kindness when they worry that all they have is a manger to offer. And I'm here to tell you that more often than not, that is exactly what's needed. The nativity story serves as a model for us. And I often find that if you're going to embark on a spiritual or reflective quest, which I highly recommend you do, Today's a good day, hold the promise and give it a try. Doing so is often enhanced when we do so in accordance with the rhythm of the seasons. So as we enter into the darkest time of the year during a pandemic and the days grow short, we anticipate the return to the light. The idea of the birth of hope in an unexpected place that brings light to the world and becomes a catalyst for hope for generations of people to come gives us a template to follow. So if you decide to make your own personal pilgrimage to the Bethlehem of your own soul, where your heart is in its holiest place, it helps to understand that kindness is powerful. Interestingly enough, we often think of kindness as something soft or simple or bland, perhaps even ordinary. From a social perspective, we know kindness is important we want other people to view us as kind. We teach our children to be kind. And we know we naturally prefer the company of those we have experienced as being kind to us. And it's this soft, ordinary aspect of kindness that allows it to be taken for granted or to slip by unnoticed. This is one reason why we need journals to help us notice and track it. 
But it's also this soft, nearly invisible aspect of kindness that gives it such power and potential. Because kindness can slip in quietly, like a seemingly ordinary child born in a manger, we might not notice its impact. And we won't fear its impact or its ability to transform our lives if we are perceiving it as something soft or gentle. But the language of heaven is indeed the language of paradox. And what looks small to us is really often very large for someone else. Seemingly small acts of kindness contain within them the power to save a life. In her book, Invisible Acts of Power, Caroline Mace tells the story of a man who was walking home one night with the intention of taking his own life at the end of the evening. He decided he could find hope to live on until the next morning when the person driving near him stopped at the crosswalk, waved him on, invited him to walk, and smiled at him. And just the simple act of literally holding a door open for someone carries with it the alchemy to restore their faith. Just ask anyone who's ever tried to navigate a heavy door while walking on crutches after an injury, not to mention what metaphorically opening a door for someone does. We can offer one another opportunities. We can lend someone assistance, or we can just simply show someone that we have faith and belief in them that they truly matter. That alone is enough to change someone's life irre irrevocably. Nearly 20 years ago now, I had invited my aunt to attend an author event with me at the Ferry Building in San Francisco. I'd been looking forward to seeing her for months and suffice to say that the journey into the city that night had been an arduous one. When I arrived and was waiting outside the venue, she called to tell me that she wasn't coming. And when I asked why not, she said only that she had just suddenly realized she didn't want to. Something about that interaction broke my heart. I sat down on a nearby cement bench and even though I was embarrassingly still in full public view, I, I just couldn't stop crying. And what happened next, I will never forget. A woman walked up to me, smiled at me, put her hand on my shoulder and gave me a huge, fresh sunflower. Something in her compassion went all the way through me and had an instant healing effect that is still difficult to describe in words. By the time I realized what she had done for me, she was gone. I'd never seen her before. I'll never see her again, but I'll never forget her face or the impact she's had on my life for the last 20 years how much she restored my faith in life and in humanity in a single instant, and how much she rerouted my life for the better and caused me to reflect on the whole of my life's journey in a single instant and for all the years since. To this day, if I catch myself in the act of being less than kind, it's still her face that I see and I resolve to do better. So why am I telling you this? Why is that story important? Why is the choice to be kind important? Because it's the smallest acts of kindness that arrive cloaked in softness that have the power to transform a life. And these experiences are able to make it all the way into our cell tissue because we don't see them coming and we don't immediately recognize the long-term impact. I'm quite sure the woman with the sunflower didn't set out with the intention to reroute my life for the better that day, but that's exactly what she did nonetheless. Kindness is so important precisely because it is powerful, because it is something everyone can do no matter their age or station in life, and because the effects are always positive and always eternal. And I'm going to pause I want us all to think about that for a moment. How many things can we do in life that we can count on with absolute certainty that the effect will always be positive and always be eternal? Kindness will do that. We all have the power several times a day to put something out in the universe whose effects are only benevolent 
only for the good of the world and whose good effects are eternal and have no end. If you knew that pausing to smile, just pausing to smile would save someone's life, would you do it? Of course you would. Of course you would do that. You have the power to quite literally resurrect someone with something as seemingly insignificant as a smile or a kind word. A very small effort really can make all the difference. Any good deed or act of kindness has no end. Every day holds the promise in it that when we serve one another, that's where heaven begins. Recently, I was talking with someone very dear to me whose husband has recently committed suicide. She was understandably worried about how to protect and honor his memory and worried that others might lose their good opinion of him. We sat for a while and we talked about all of the good things he had done in his life. And we talked about how the influence of each and every good thing he has done will never end. It'll continue to live on in the people he knew him, who knew him. It'll live on in his children and in the children his children may have one day. Every good thing he has done will endure. There's no way to erase it and there's no way to stop it. The same is true for each of us. How might your life be different if you recognized what is true? That when you get up each morning to greet the promise of the day, you know that you have the power to be a catalyst for a miracle in someone's life, even if that person is your own self. If I asked you, hey, would you like to have the power to perform miracles? You would probably say yes. And I'm here to tell you that the good news is you already do. Yet when I say that, you may still believe that the territory of performing miracles rests with those who have achieved superhuman status, such as that of a man who was once born in a manger. But I'm here to remind you that you are every bit as powerful, every bit as capable of leaving your mark on the world and creating lasting change that will live on long after you are gone. So here's where faith and trust come in. You may not ever live to see the results of one single act of kindness, but you have to know and trust that no act of kindness is ever wasted and all acts of kindness have everlasting effects. And you have to be content with knowing that you may or may not ever see the results. This is perhaps why Princess Diana said, carry out a random act of kindness, safe in the knowledge that someday someone might do the same for you. Diana knew what she was talking about. If any of you are familiar with her life, you know that her life with the royal family was one that was fraught with challenge and difficulty, one that was certainly filled with metaphorical landmines. There was nowhere she could go there was often no one she could trust to talk to who wouldn't sell the story to the tabloids. And yet, what she's often best remembered for is her work in ending physical landmines and reaching out to people. It's the fact that she had that difficulty that made her easy to relate to. It's the fact that she was able to do those things take something from her experience, transform it and give it to others that makes her known as the people's princess in much the same way as a birth in a manger promises us that this world of heaven belongs to each and every one of us. So take a moment now to think of all the times someone else has shown you kindness. How did that change your life? How can this inspire you to choose today to be intentional about choosing just one act of kindness to yourself or to others? Can you send somebody an uplifting email or text? Can you wave, smile, and let somebody merge on the freeway? Can you incorporate one intentional moment of kindness towards yourself or others into your daily routine? Do you have a moment to smile at someone? Can you give a compliment? 
Could you reach out to someone you haven't spoken to in a while? Could you treat someone, perhaps yourself, to coffee or to tea? My hope is that when you leave here today, you'll never again underestimate the impact of a single act of kindness. Be patient and compassionate with yourself as it is a choice and it is a practice. Practice doesn't make perfection, but it does make progress. So my hope for you is that you go forth with a renewed sense of your capacity to bring light into a dark world, safe in the knowledge that no act of kindness is ever too small and every kind act is eternal. The power to perform miracles, to resurrect someone, to be an agent of change and to leave our own mark on eternity is not something that belongs in the realm of once upon a time or in only those who come as princesses or kings. This power resides in every one of us. We have gifts to offer each other this, I will remind you, this is the season of hope. This is the season of the return to light. This is the season of possibility. And our time is now. You do have the power to choose kindness. And this is a world where you can choose to be anything. And I hope that you will choose to be kind. Blessed be. Thank you, Kai, for your wonderful sermon. Now I'm going to speak to you about generosity. As I was given this task, I started to think to myself, I know what this word is, but what does generosity actually mean? For those of you into astrology, when I proudly proclaim that I am a Virgo, I am sure all kinds of things pop up in your mind, both the wonderful traits and the traits to be worked on. A little clarity for those who do not have preconceived notions of the traits of different sun signs. For me, being a Virgo means I like order. Virgos can also be detail oriented and have a thirst for knowledge. One of the places I like to gain some quick knowledge is by looking up words in dictionaries. I am a word nerd and the dictionary feeds my need to have structure and my love of learning. So I looked up the word generosity. Being a Virgo, I am very thorough. So I looked up a lot of definitions. My favorite definition said, generosity is a quality that's a lot like unselfishness. Someone showing generosity is happy to give time, money, food, or kindness to people in need. Generosity is a quality like honesty and patience that we all probably wish we had more of. I want to thank you for your generosity in whatever form that takes. Through your generosity, you make our Unitarian Universalist co-side community what it is today, a safe space to come together and just be in community. And for that, I am grateful. Thank you. So we now take an offering. This allows us to exercise that all important generosity of spirit, an offering that supports the mission and service of UUCC. And for the generosity you display by being present here and the generosity of all those who support this community with time, with talent, with treasure, with trust, we thank you all most profoundly. If your generous spirit moves you today, Please feel free to contribute what you can to UUCC, either by check or online. Please follow the instructions in today's order of service. While collections take place, let us take a few moments to hear the Coastside Threshold Choir sing Keep On Believing, written by Laura Fannin. on showing up in the moment, keep on working for a world that's safe and kind, keep on caring even when it breaks your heart, keep on believing in this life, keep on keep showing up. Showing up. Keep on working. 
offerings by singing our UUCC hymn together. Dave will lead us in extinguishing the chalice. I now extinguish the chalice flame. Please join me in reading these words by Elizabeth Salad Jones. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of the truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Then to Grace, can you please lead us in our closing hymn? Please rise now in body and or spirit and join us in singing this beautiful song, When Our Heart Is In A Holy Place. Thank you. 
wonderful and very timely service today. Thank you, Kai, for your inspirational words. We also want to acknowledge our first Sunday production team, music director Shauna Pickett-Gordon, artistic director Noreen cooper Hevlin, and our session management engineer Bruce Raffnell. Thank you, Linda Grace, Shauna, Tom, and the other singers, and all of you for participating. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you'll join us in the breakout rooms immediately following. We would like the breakout rooms to be a safe space where we can talk openly and honestly about our topic today. We also want to remind people that what is said here stays here, but thoughts and concepts we learned and are inspired by can be shared. Once in the breakout room, please open your chat box. We will be putting up some prompts to help start the conversation. Please be thoughtful of the time so that anyone who wishes to speak has the opportunity to do so. Here are a few things to consider in your discussion, but don't feel obligated to answer these questions as these breakout rooms are intended to be a free flowing sharing of thoughts and sentiments, whatever they may be. Perhaps pick one topic that speaks to you to discuss with the group or not. For our breakout sessions, Please consider these thoughts. Think about a time when someone was kind. What effect did that have on your life? Why do you remember it? Think about a time when you were kind to someone else. In what ways did this also have a positive effect on you and or your sense of well-being? What are some ways you can choose kindness today? In just a few moments, Bill will give everyone permission to unmute themselves. Have a wonderful week and stay safe.